Good evening, everyone. This is Dina. Welcome back to my channel. Today is Sunday. It is the 18th of April, and I'm here to give you a stitching update and uh, roll the dice to see what I'm stitching next week, how many stitches I'm going to be stitching on um, gathering eggs. And I actually have a couple of lovely things to show you when it comes to happy mail and haul <laughs> that kind of go together. Um, so let's get started first with the stitching. This is what I've been working on uh, over the weekend. This is a gift for my friend's mom, um, Ellen. And I had mentioned, I think before, that I am planning on stitching the poem for one part of a box lid and the two girls drinking tea for the other part. And I have decided I'm going to do the two little girls or the two young ladies um, on the top of the box so I can put the little charm. There's a teapot charm down there. Sorry, it's upside down, but there you go. Um, and then I'm going to put the poem on the inside lid of the box. Um, and I think that's the way I'm going to fully finish it. But I had a couple of Zoom sessions this weekend. One was stitching with a friend of mine. Um, and another was a uh, two hour meeting that I had to just be a part of where I just had to listen. And I didn't have to comment. I didn't have to really take a real active role. And so I sat in here and I just stitched. Um, that was the only time I really got to stitch this weekend, but I made some progress and I am pretty excited about it. I'm stitching this in a variegated silk and it really is going to show you. You've seen the poem before. But look at that beautiful dress. I love the way it's striping up. Um, I decided I wanted it to, to be striped so it would be very obvious. Uh, it almost makes it look like that the um, picture has been squeegeed across um, or is, you know, old and withered. So I like that a lot. But that is one of the two ladies absolutely complete and that is the middle of the table so I have that second piece that second half of this pattern halfway done so I'm excited about that I'm really happy uh, to have gotten that far before I put it away this time and it went pretty quick so that's good the silk that I'm using I have a few links of it left for that skein and then I have a whole nother skein. So I'll, I'm gonna be fine when it comes to the using of the silk. So very, very happy about that. Glad it's turning out okay. So now I want to give you a um, couple of things uh, that we need to, to do and, and um, talk about. And the first one is to roll the dice for how many stitches I'm gonna do. And that Laura says she's gonna do them with me, of course, for gathering eggs. Oh, well, this is a good middle of the road, Laura. We got three. <laughs> we had, um, I had 500 the first weekend, 600 the first week, and I was so thrilled when Laura got a one this past week. So 300 is quite doable. So we will be doing 300 stitches in gathering eggs starting tomorrow. So I hope to get started on that in the morning. Okay, I do wanna show you something else. This is just kindness, stitchy kindness. When my husband went on his um, hike recently, he, he went on another big section of the Appalachian Trail and he went through the rest of Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, and into Pennsylvania, and I'm, I'm, I can't remember if there was another state they touched or not, but they're in Pennsylvania now. And one of the things they did this time was position their trucks to resupply, and one of the places that they resupplied was at Harper's Ferry. Let's blow it out a little bit. There we go, a little bit better light. And this is a magnet, and my husband brought it home for me for a needle minder. And I like it, it's nice and big. That would hold my scissors, I think. If it's strong enough, I'll have to try it. 
So I wanted to share that with you. That was lovely. And then recently, I got an interesting uh, message um, from um, a viewer, and her name is Lisa. And Lisa um, actually just in contacted me and said, would you be willing to send me your mailing address? I have something I found that's funny. It's funny to me, and I hope it's funny to you, and I just want to send it to you. And I thought, oh, that could be interesting. <laughs> but look at this lovely, lovely card, everyone. Isn't that cute? So elegant. Anyway, Lisa wrote me a note, and this is what she said. She said, while going through an old stitching magazine from 1992, she came across an ad for a new cross-stitch pattern from an artist by the name of Bob Timberlake. Now, she immediately recognized the picture that was being advertised for the new pattern as Friends, which is the beautiful piece I stitched for my friend Cheryl. She says, it seemed like a fun idea to make this ad into ring bling for you. And by the way, the price for the pattern at that time was $4.95. Lisa, thank you so, so much. I have to show you what Lisa made for me. This is my thread drops that she handmade. And they are lovely little flowers and, and leaves. And they're all in that pretty black and gray tone paper. But on the ring, the bling is charms. There's a pair of scissors. And there's a bobbin, a floss, and then there's the 2021 year. If I can get it to where you can read it. Trust me, that's 2021 there. But here's what she was talking about. She took the ad for that cross-stitch pattern and made it into that ring bling. Oh my goodness, isn't that precious? Love it, absolutely love it, Lisa. Thank you so much. So that was really, really wonderful happy mail. That was a wonderful gift. She even packed it in a velvet pouch, a little velveteen pouch. Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, the last thing I wanna to talk to you about is some haul and I don't always talk about haul because usually what I'm getting are threads to finish out something or fabric to stitch something with but this haul is very exciting this is my new floor stand <laughs> so I want to officially thank Brenda Handwork Maniac for showing this Elon stand floor stand on her channel and how she used it because um, recently the floor stand I've been using for two or three years now has started having metal shavings from me turning the the pole back and forth to, to run my thread under to end my stitches and that grinding of that I guess has has worn down the metal and it's getting black shavings on my hands my clothes and my fabrics so, my husband I heard me complaining about it, um, especially getting on my fabric. And he said, well, you know, that metal stand looks heavy and it's got some sharp edges on it. And so, it's sitting up over here. <laughs> it's, been, it's been moved. Anyway, um, he said, I would like for you to go out and find you a really nice floor stand that you would like to have and let me gift it to you. So that's what he did. So I'm gonna take the camera if I can, if I don't make you seasick, and I'm gonna bring it over here and show you my new stand. There it is. I absolutely am loving it. I've got this little V in there, this little piece that straps on. 
it's got a little strap under here, um, to put in for the Q-snap because it's actually cut at an angle perfect for hoops and uh, scroll rods, the frames on scroll rods. When you're using Q-snaps, you have to use uh, these adapters. And so, once again, I wanna say a big thank you uh, to Brenda because when I was deciding what um, floor stand I might wanna look at, I had looked at several online and I kept thinking, I remember how nice hers looked at the time I saw that video, but I wasn't in the market for one. And I just made a mental note that I really liked it. And so when I was given the opportunity by my husband to get a new one, I went back and I found her video and I watched it again. <laughs> I took notes. So I will put in the comments below uh, the website for Artisan Design. That's who you order it through. Um, it's a one-man shop. He hand makes them when you order them. So there is a bit of a wait. You have to wait for him to hand make it. But you also have to wait in case he's having trouble getting parts or any of the supplies to make it with. What I like about it are twofold. There's not a harsh, sharp edge anywhere on this. Um, it's all s nice and smooth. It's a quick turn of a knob to move my uh, clamp to, to position my stitching in exactly the spot that I want. And there's a little lever on the side that you just push down and you can lift the arm up and down depending on if you change chairs or, you know, what you might be doing. So when I zoom on my iPad over here, I have to raise my chair up as high as it will go so people can see me because they'll, they'll see me about right here otherwise. And, um, and when I do that, then I, can, I raise the stand up a little more so it's comfortable for me. Um, so that's been a real plus. I've loved it. I, I got it um, on Thursday and I got, I got a chance to put it together Friday and I've been stitching on it ever since. <laughs> so I uh, appreciate you letting me share it with you. I'm excited about it. I don't, I don't get anything new like that very often. Um, so if you're looking for a floor stand, I strongly encourage you to consider it because I really, really like it. And I know Brenda's very happy with hers as well. So I think that is everything for now. Um, I am tickled to death to tell you that all six of my package winners for my celebration that we just drew for on the 15th have all contacted me already with their mailing addresses. And so I've got packages that I have pre-wrapped over here, ready to go. I got mailing envelopes today, and I'm hoping to get them in the mail if I can Monday. So um, you guys will be getting your package hopefully before this video even goes up. So um, other than that, I am getting lots of votes on my choices um, that I put out there for my multiple choice May stitching. Everybody's been voting. It's been great fun. And there will be a front runner and then the, uh, there'll be another one come up close to it. I think it's safe to say at this point that in each pair, there's a clear winner. Um, now, there's, there's going to be voting going on as long as y'all want to um, until the end of the month. And so I probably, uh, that could probably change. But for now, there is a clear um, choice that you guys have made <laughs> in each of the two pairs that I'm seeing so far. Um, and I'm loving it. Of course, I love all eight of them, so it doesn't matter which four I get to work on. But uh, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait to find out. So thanks again. If you haven't voted, go back on last um, video, uh, episode 162, and I, I, I lay out the eight projects in, in their pairs and ask you to vote on one in each pair. That If you want to vote on that many, um, you're perfectly welcome to, to do that, if you will. And so uh, thanks for that, if you've already done it. And uh, I'm going to take Coco and head off to bed, and I will 
see you uh, on Monday working on those 300 stitches. Happy stitching, everybody. Good night. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Dina. It's Monday. It's April the 19th and I've got just a few minutes before I go pick up my son at work today and I am thrilled to be able to share with you that I got my stitching done on gathering eggs for the week. So this is where I got to today. <laughs> I had mentioned that I wanted to go over here and fill in this background. It was up to about right there and I was able to bring it down that one color and finish it off. So it's now finished on both sides. So that's brought it way down to here. I really, really like that. And because I wanted to finish the color, I rolled a three last night and let Laura know that we got a three for 300 stitches for this week. And I started stitching on that background today because it was going to be pretty easy. There are maybe two stitches in there that uh, I had to skip and leave for another color that I hadn't uh, started that color that far up yet. It'll be much heavier down here. But otherwise, it was easy fill-in stitching. I just had to watch for the areas where I needed to put something else in there. And um, But I got the background completed in that color anyway. And I'm so happy to do that, to finish out that color I had to stitch a little extra. So this is actually 404 stitches instead of the required 300. But I love it. I'm gonna take a picture of it and see if I can use it for a prompt in anything that I'm working on. I'll do that when I get back <laughs> from picking up my son. But I'm very happy uh, to tell you that the midpoint of this project is right about where her, where her, the first tie is, that's the middle of the project. So not two more sessions on it, and I'll be at the middle, which would be awesome. Which means um, we've got at least uh, one more week to stitch, and um, that means I get to stitch one more time on this piece with, with a focus. And I'm hoping that I could get at least one side of it to the halfway point uh, for that. So there you have it. That's my progress on gathering eggs today. I am gonna put it away for today because I've got to see what other prompts are out there for my other Facebook groups. I've been ignoring them because I stitched so much on my gift piece for my uh, friend's mother, um, Ellen. Uh, because I was doing Zoom meetings and that was the easiest thing to do. I'm feeling like I'm a little behind in my regular stitching. I need to go look at my Facebook groups and see what prompts are out there for me to work on uh, with my other projects. And now that I've got my required stitching done for the week, that gives me a lot of time this week to make some progress on those prompts. I have also am making a record of all the voting that's going on for my May stitching. It's still coming in pretty well, so I'm excited about that. And then I can make plans for the month of May during that last week of April and share that with you. Happy stitching for the day. I don't know if I'll have any further progress today or not. I'm planning on heading to the gym with my husband a little bit later this afternoon and, um, and see what uh, they may want to do for dinner and uh, then we'll go from there. So stitching may or may not happen later today, but whatever I do work on next, I'll be sure to come and share it with you. Happy stitching everybody. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Dina. It is the evening of April 20th had a very busy day today. I wanted to come by and show you about my stitching, I guess, and tell you about my day. <laughs> it's been a lovely day. I um, was able to have a bit of a, a lie-in, as they say. Uh, slept a little bit late this morning, and um, my now that my husband is uh, back from his long hike, and he uh, helps my son get off to work, and I get to go back to bed. So Coco and I had a great nap today. 
And then when I got up, I had to do a bit of committee work for my church and got all the work done first before I started stitching. Well, I was about ready to stitch and I realized that my husband was out of town today for a doctor's appointment in Atlanta and Coco wasn't going to get much of an exercise day if I didn't do something about it. So she and I, before I started stitching, went to the Wilshire Park, which is the one I have highlighted on my video in years past. And uh, we had a wonderful trot uh, through the park and uh, she met a couple of lovely uh, dogs and she met a beautiful little child who just couldn't stand it. She had to come pet her and Coco was very good. She let her pet her, um, which is unusual. <laughs> She's usually pretty shy. So that went great. And then um, I got home and started stitching about noon today. So I am tickled to be able to let you know that I was able to get 473 stitches in today in pandemic. I was stitching on pandemic to meet two prompts. The first prompt was my 24 hours of cross stitch acrostic with a letter P for pandemic. And the second prompt was to stitch on a project that had outlining in it or um, a place that you stitch and you leave it open on the inside. It's not filled in completely. So as you know, Pandemic has several of those. You can see them. Here's one in particular. And then here's one up here that's open and not, not completely filled in. A lot of these have openings all through them. So what did I do today? What was 473 stitches worth today? Well, when I started, I had this done about right here, and I had the top done all the way across. So I started at that top. I did all of this. I came down, it's hard to see because of the light shade of the floss. But I came down here and I did all of this and met up with this one on the bottom. So I got both of those two done, came back up here and met back in the middle. So now there is a, a heart opening there and there is a heart stitched in there. I've just barely gotten started on it at the top as you can see the little V there. That's the beginning of that heart. And once I get this heart done, there's a little part of a motif here, this is the page break right here. And this is the page break right here. So I just have this section right in here to do and I will finish my first page. Isn't that exciting? I'm loving this, I'm loving the thread, I'm loving the way that it's turning out and, and how the variegation is working. I think it's gonna be beautiful. Anyway, I was watching um, Magnolia Nana uh, today and it turns out she's doing pandemic as well and she's using a variegated DMC that is a blue also but it's a Delph blue it's not exactly the same color as mine it has a darker maybe more navy where mine's more royal anyway beautiful it's looking beautiful and it was so funny to see that uh, Sharon and I have said before that we have the same taste in a lot of things that we like to work on, and apparently we have the same taste in colors as well. Um, but Sharon is beautiful. Well, I'm gonna let you uh, get back to whatever else you were doing. It's uh, after 10.30 here, so uh, it's time for me to take Coco out for her last visit outside and uh, let her get to bed. She's very sweet about waiting up for me. And um, I'm aware of that, so I don't want to keep her up, you know, too, too late. She's sleeping, of course, on the floor. But it's not the same sleep as when she gets to go to bed. So, well, I hope to uh, continue getting votes on my um, multiple choice May stitching. Thank you so much, all of you who are voting. I'm getting quite a few votes, and um, I'm excited about that. And I will probably calculate the votes up until I would say if not the last day of the month maybe up until what the day before 
and then I'll try to put up my videos so that you will know what I'll be working on uh, for the May stitching. And um, I'm starting to see Mania video plans popping up. I'm loving it. I'm enjoying watching those. So whatever you plan to do for the month of May, I hope you enjoy it. Happy stitching. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dina, and today is Wednesday. It is April the 21st. I'm here to give you a stitching update today. I was able to get a little stitching done. I met a prompt in my 24 hours of cross stitch acrostic. The letter that I was working on today was the last A in the word stab. Uh, I'd already done the A in the word and before. So this was my next to last prompt for this month of April in the 24 Hours of Cross Stitch. So I'm pretty excited about that. And my A stood for Arbor in Winter Arbor. And I'll remind you what that looks like. And when I started this for my um, Whip Go board, I was to do one row. So I did this entire top border because I had a hard time splitting out which part of it was one row. <laughs> anyway, so I came down today and I started on the trees. Now, this first tree, if you can see it, looks like it has a little bit of a long stitch about it. And it does because it's a specialty stitch and it's actually called fan vaulting stitch. It's not hard to do but it makes a great, great look. So I'm hoping you can see it in the stitches there. They almost look like a chicken foot. <laughs> but that's like the evergreen, and then it's got all the snow on top of it. And I went on across the bottom there, outlining the foot of the trees that were to come. And I went ahead and stitched the second tree and all of the little specialty stitches in the um, snowflakes. There are Algerian eyelets, and there are a couple of other unusual stitches. Um, I'm gonna look the name of it up so I tell you correctly. Uh, a star stitch was one of them, and then the um, Algerian Island I mentioned, and then the Smyrna Cross was the other one. So all of those little specialty stitches are in all these snowflakes that you can probably not even tell on the camera. There's the star stitch. It looks a little bit like a star, as you can tell. And then here are the Algerian Islets. And all the rest of these little ones in there are little Smyrnas. So there you have it. So far in this little bit, right in this section here, there are four specialty stitches. <laughs> but that's the drawn thread for you. I'm learning. <laughs> that's what it is. So that's what I got done today. I did about 343 stitches on it because my goal was to get two trees done. I would love to have gotten a third one, but I just ran out of time, you know, that I had available to stitch today. So that's okay. I did good. So we'll put this away until the next time I pull it out, and we'll work on it again. I hope you've had a great day. It's, um, it's a big day for us tomorrow. Um, my son is um, considering a um, procedure, and... Um, it would be quite life-changing for him if he were to do it. And if he decides to do so, I will let you know. But just uh, send him some good thoughts um, his way, if you will. And um, so, but tomorrow, I said that mainly to say, tomorrow I will be um, taking him for some medical uh, appointments and um, toward checking this out. And I will have to take my travel stitching with me because I'm just going to sit and wait um, because I don't know how long it might be. It could be a very short visit. It could be a little more, you know, involved. 
So I am going to have a wonderful morning tomorrow. I'm going to play canasta with some of my girlfriends at the church, and then I will leave there uh, promptly <laughs> at 12.15 so that I can pick my son up at 12.30, get him to his appointment, and then I'll stitch after that. <clears throat> so my husband is going to uh, be on cocoa duty tomorrow, and I know they'll have a good day together. Well, that's all I have to share for tonight, so I will talk to you, I'm hoping, tomorrow night with a little bit of progress, even if it's just um, a small amount. I'll talk to you soon, and happy stitching. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is April 22nd, and I'm here to give you my stitching update this Thursday. Well, I did some travel stitching today. It's still in the car. It's on my gift for my uh, friend's mom. So uh, I'll show it to you uh, when I get a little more progress on it because I just got a little bit done on it today. Uh, it turned out I only had to wait an hour and so I didn't get a whole lot of stitching done. But when I got home, I had everything set up because I wanted to work on two things. I wanted to work on a prompt for 24 hours of cross stitch and I wanted to continue working on something toward my whip go goals, one of my harder ones. And so I was able to complete that with one piece. So this is my Teresa Wentzler. This is my Mermaid by Teresa Wentzler. My whip go goal is to get a half of the border done. So I'm working across the top now and then I will try to work down one side. I'm learning a lot as I go. So I got this medallion done and part of this done. I had a very little bit done uh, across there. Uh, just the top blue really portion. And then it called for a this white outline of these shells. It called for a material I'm not familiar with. It called for a marlet, M-A-R-L-I-T-T. -T. I don't know if that's another name for a color, but the color they're asking for is ecru, and it's number 1034. So I'm not sure what that really is. If you know, please let me know. Um, but I looked at the picture and I looked at, um, thought a moment what I might do, and I wound up using, get my bag here and I'll show you because I haven't even bobbinated it yet. I just threw the skein in here when I worked because I wanted to try it. This is the DMC Etoile. And this is Ecru in Etoile. So I'm sure you cannot see it properly, but it's full of sparkle and the sparkle color is gold. And some of the other colors in this piece in the border are gold. So I thought that would just do really, really well. So I want to show you where I got on it. I got quite a bit of work done on it today. In fact, I got 481 stitches in it today and this is what it looks like. And I think that light's a little too bright. Let's move it back a bit. There we go, that's a little bit better. But I'm gonna come close so you can see this etoile. That ecru in there, that's the outline in the middle there of those seashells is what I'm using it for. And I don't think you can see the sparkle in it on camera but you certainly can to the naked eye. So anyway, this top portion of the blue waves were done, so I did all of the etoile all the way across, and then I added two of the colors across the bottom. There's one more blue that goes on the bottom to complete that wave, and then I'll be doing the inside of each of the seashells that of course will be a replication. Once you learn the pattern, it's not so bad. What you do have to remember is to flip it going this way. 
I had to frog a couple of times today because I was going with that pattern and then realized, wait a minute, these should be going the other direction. So I had to frog a couple of them out. But I am tickled pink that I have gotten so much of that top border completed because I'm thinking that another couple of good sessions may actually see that top border done and the side border is the same. You Once you figure out what your colors are and best way to work on it is, then you can, you can do the longer version of it. So, love the colors. I think they're beautiful and I think that is gonna be a really pretty border when I finish with it. But tickled, tickled, tickled to make that much progress today. And the acrostic that I was trying to um, get with this <laughs> was uh, for 24 hours of cross stitch and it's called punch and stab. That was the acrostic for April. And I needed the U in punch and it was my final letter in the acrostic. And so I finished it today. <laughs> I can check off the last one. I'll post it tonight. And I have finished my April acrostic. So now what I will do is I will focus more on what else can I work on toward my next whip go. I have um, my Haid, which I, I have uh, tried to work on uh, this morning and my tablet needed charging. So I've got it charged up now and hopefully maybe tomorrow I could work a little bit on it. I've got a page finish I've got to get. That's on that's on my whip go, but I have a year to do it again. I keep thinking in my head that I need to get it done the month it's called. And um, I would like to uh, get that done before I work on the second number that was called this month because that's a new start. And I have enough whips right now and about to go into May stitching. So um, I'm thinking that, you know, I may wait on that one a little while, but I have a lot of new starts in my whip go board. So there's a part of me that wants to really push some things toward a finish next month. And so thank you all again for voting. The votes are still coming in. Um, the front runners are pretty obvious by now in each category. Um, so I can go ahead and start doing some planning maybe early next week and then just check and make sure Nothing's changed. Anyway, but we're almost there. We're almost, it's pretty uh, obvious which ones are gonna be the winners because I don't think the gap could be closed up uh, in, a, in a couple of the cases very well. All right, I'm gonna let you get back to your uh, stitching. There is a uh, 24 hours of cross stitch marathon this weekend. Um, I don't know how much I'll be able to stitch but I'm about to make some plans <laughs> because it starts tomorrow. Uh, so really glad to get this one done, uh, to get that acrostic finished, and now I can celebrate it by working uh, through the uh, marathon weekend. So I hope you'll be doing some wonderful stitching this weekend, and I will look forward to talking to you again soon. Happy stitching, everyone. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Dina. It is Friday. It is the 23rd of April. I had to actually look over at my iPad and see the date. I hadn't written it at all today anywhere. But today I was working on a prompt and this prompt was for um, a challenge to stitch on something that had feet in the design. Well, <clears throat> I had two choices. I could either do Little Sheep Virtues for the sheep, or I could do my Sleepy Hollow with the horse. So I looked at several prompts I'm gonna be working on for the next week or so, and I'm gonna use the horse's, uh, the Sleepy Hollow one for other things. So I went ahead today and pulled out my Little Sheep Virtues. When I worked on it before, I had started the block uh, Simplicity and I had gotten the uh, word and heart, and I had gotten the tr this plant minus the flowers. It was just the plant itself. So that's where I started today. Now, 
If you saw a recent video of mine, you may recall that I said when I did my border, I didn't realize when I did a two layers in the middle row that I was actually infringing on the space for the picture. I didn't notice it until I started stitching it. I actually thought it was the same size as the one above it and below it. Not. So I learned it when I was working on this plant. I did the, the word first, and so I did the letters all nice and big where I could have shrunk them a little, but they'll be consistent with the rest of them, so I guess that's okay. And I wound up having to shorten the stem on the flower. I still got all the flower petals in there, but I had to change this flower because it's so close to the others that I had to change the, the actual formation of that middle flower. The rest of them are as charted. Then I did the little sheep as charted, but of course the little birdhouse was too tall. So I also had to take a few stitches out of this pole, but the rest of it is as charted. Then unfortunately, that little sun doesn't fit. And I felt like to try to crowd it in there would make the picture look crowded. So I decided to leave it out. But thank goodness with, with the flowers, the whole sheep, and the whole birdhouse today, I got 301 stitches. <laughs> and I needed 300. So that was awesome. So look where we are now. I'm at that critical point. Do I start and do this one or do I skip over and do this one? Well, I like to stitch from left to right. So let me show you what's going in the middle. This is from a different designer from the, I believe it's the sister. Uh, this is Country Cottage Needleworks and it's called Sheep in the Meadow. And it says, sheep in the meadow singing their song softly and sweetly all the day long. This will not fit in this space, knew that going in. No one's been able to fit it together without taking some of it out. But I was able to talk to some other uh, stitchers who have stitched it like this together. And they went ahead and uh, made the changes they needed to make and had it fit. So I counted very hard and I went ahead and marked my working copy today. But what you're gonna see different is this flower right here in the middle and the whole grass underneath it, that's what's coming out to shrink this down to the right size. And then on these um, words across the bottom, one word is coming out and it's the word the. So it'll just say all day long instead of all the day long. And that should give it enough room to come out with the spaces of the lettering and the spaces between it and the next word because you'll already have spaces there. I believe those are gonna work. So what I think I will do, quite frankly, <laughs> is I think I'm gonna start with the lettering on the bottom because it's the longest and I will try to position it so it fits perfectly in the design. And then I will start I will double count, because I counted once today, but I'll count again. I'll count how many stitches I have in my new design, missing the things that I've taken out, and I'll count how many stitches I have room for here, this way. Then I will count to see what I have going this way, because this has a border on it that's different than the others, and my thoughts are right now. I figured out a way to put it in. I figured I would take out one of the little flower leafy things on the end and instead of having that section there to the end, I will take out the flower and put this little loop handle looking thing right where the flower is supposed to be. However, since there's already a border here, I'm gonna stitch the picture first, and I think it's gonna look fine without the border. So that will help too. Okay, so that's the plan, and uh, 
if this one is one of the ones selected for my um, focus stitching through the multiple choice May voting that's going on right now, then that is my intention is to give this middle section three days of stitching. Don't know, don't think I'll finish it. Um, just the grass and the heels probably will take three days, but I could probably get a good bit of it started and that's my plan. So great progress today. It actually, I, I decided to work on this one for that prompt and I'm glad that I did um, because it got me to a really great point um, before next month in case this one gets to be stitched on. So I'm going to say good night, let you guys get on with whatever it is you're doing right now before you started watching me. Um, I hope you're stitching. And then I hope to be able to come and show you more progress tomorrow. I'm going to let you go. I'll talk to you next time. Happy stitching, everybody. Good night. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Dina and I wanted to give you a little update today. It is Saturday, it is the 24th of April. I'm in my stitching for the 24 Hours of Cross Stitch Marathon. And so far, I've only done 10 hours of that. Not gonna hit 24 this time, I don't believe, but I'm still gonna get some goals met in my stitching and I, I'm happy to share with you that earlier I met my um, first goal, which was to hit a prompt with uh, the Little Sheep Virtues that I did. So now, today, I decided to hit a prompt, and this was to stitch on something that reminded you of royalty. And for me, tea, English tea, uh, is something that the royalty does every day, and so I pulled out my, I'll put the kettle on, and I put into it 726 stitches today. So I started about here, right around the teacup, and I got this whole top portion, including the thing on the wall, done. So um, there you have it. <laughs> That is coming along. Now all I have left is the bottom of her dress, which is a, a large piece like this. But um, I'm gonna put it away for now. I've met two prompts with it. And so I'm gonna uh, put it away. It's great travel stitching, so I'll keep it. And then I'll see how the voting goes for whether I work on this one or not uh, in the month of May. So thanks for letting me share my stitching from today with you. I've uh, actually had to break out my second um, skein of the silk today. It's the first, first time I've had to break it open. This is the um, Karen Water Lilies uh, Chili. And so that's what I'm using for this one. And I'll be packing it back up uh, and putting it away with this piece. So, I'm going to call it a day, put my floss away, and uh, and say uh, good night for now, and hopefully I'll get to do some stitching tomorrow. Uh, we shall see, and of course if I do, I'll come back and share it with you, but I hope you're having a lot more time to stitch in the 24 Hours Marathon than I've had this time, but um, I hope you're enjoying whatever you're stitching, and I know I do. So I'll talk to you soon. Hope to have something to share with you tomorrow. Happy stitching, everybody. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is Dina. It is Sunday, April 25th, and it has been a wonderfully productive day for me today. Well, I had a great walk today with Coco, who's ringing the bell now, uh, today to take her to the park. Had a wonderful time with her. I have some footage of it um, where she's playing and chasing the ball and, and uh, hiking. So I'll put that at the end today. But what I was able to work on tonight is my Rosewood Manor 
uh, my crabapple tree and I am working on the first season of it and the first season is spring it's this one and I had part of this outer border completed um, I had gotten down to about right here I had a little tiny section of it left to close up when I got started today and this is what I got to so let me get it right here we go I had to figure out which way was top so here is where I'm at in this piece I think that's just lovely so I finished that outer border and now I have done the one of the inner borders with the little flowers in there so really happy with that I did it for a prompt I needed to stitch um, on a prompt and I didn't have anything to meet the prompt so I did um, penalty stitches so I had to do extra stitches today so I did over 400 stitches on this today but I am really tickled I'm getting further along in meeting that goal of getting that first season done this year so I just wanted to share that with you before I um, head on over here and take Coco out and then we'll be headed to bed so I will see you soon and uh, until then happy stitching hi everyone this is Tina welcome back to my channel it is Monday April 26th and during the month of April on each Monday my friend Laura and I have been rolling the dice to see how many stitches we need to put in our project that's our focus piece of the month our focus piece is a Mirabilia called gathering eggs and we've been selling this together kind of in a loose sale we stitch on it whenever is good for both of us at whatever time so Here's what uh, I can tell you. It was Laura's week to roll the dice, and I had a message late last night that she rolled for this week, and she got a four, which means 400 stitches. So today, I put in my 400 stitches. I actually got in 413. So here's where it, that looks like now. I have finished part of this wrap all the confetti stitching in here it was two more colors in there and then I came over here and I did this flower over here and I used that yellow and just ran out that um, floss down in the her uh, fluff of her sleeve she's got a puffy sleeve on the end there and so that's in there and then I came over here and I filled in this background bringing it back further down and started in this beautiful purple that's going to go across behind her as well i have a few little spaces in here that i have to go back and grab a color that uh, isn't anywhere else around little confetti stitches and i'll do that the next time when i get started uh, but i'm trying to bring it all uh, down about the same time I'm definitely halfway done now um, I think with all the different stitches that I have um, but isn't that a pretty pretty colorful piece I love the colors they're they're quite um, varied and quite springish you know makes it fun to stitch on it right now so this uh, 400 for this week is done I'm gonna see if I can use that for a prompt anywhere I haven't even looked yet to find out but if I can that'll be great and if not then tomorrow I uh, am stitching on a prompt for cross stitch finish line called one in a series so I'll have to pull out one of my projects that's one in a series my plans are to pull out my winter arbor because I have the series of all four charts spring summer winter and fall and I did fall already and now I've started winter and I would love to stitch on it for the for that uh, prompt of stitching you know on something that's in a series and I can um, just make a goal of stitching a tree or two trees and let that be it depending on how hard the specialty stitches are they're usually not bad 
um, but I would like to put a little more work into that one. So I think I'll do that tomorrow. Anyway, I'm going to let you get back to your stitching, and I hope to talk to you very soon. Happy stitching, everyone. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Dina. It is Tuesday, the 27th of April, and I'm here right now, this morning, to give you uh, some information. I haven't done any stitching yet today. It's only about um, nine o'clock in the morning, um, and I have a, a meeting at 10, uh, and then I will be uh, in, in that meeting till about lunchtime. So when I get home uh, today, I will begin stitching, but before then, I wanted to go ahead and uh, give you some uh, voting results of what my May stitching is going to be, and then I can also give you an update on what my whip go numbers look like uh, for my whip go numbers that were pulled by Jesse Marie today. So let's start first with what is my May stitching going to look like? Well. This has been great fun, and some of these, there was a clear, clear uh, choice between the two, and in one pairing, it was fairly close, so I waited all the way until this morning uh, to uh, put the final numbers in. So this is voting up through today, up through this morning. So the first pair included Giggles in the Snow and I'll Put the Kettle On. And uh, I've worked on both of those uh, fairly recently and shared results with you. But it was a clear, clear choice, um, more than double uh, for Giggles in the Snow. And several comments were things like, um, can't wait to see that one. That's one of my favorites. And so I really have to see you work on that. There were people who commented that they really wanted to see I'll put the kettle on finished because it's a gift. And um, I just will uh, remind you if you've seen in this video, I only have the bottom part of the skirt to do and I'll finish that one. So I'll probably keep stitching on that as my travel stitching until it's done. So that one's gonna get completed anyway. So you'll get to see that soon. So let's quickly run through the others. Um, between Mermaid and Little Sheep Virtues, uh, it wasn't quite uh, double the way it was for the first pairing, but Little Sheep Virtues did win. And so I will get to start on that middle piece and I'm very excited about that. Uh, between Sleepy Hollow and Winter Arbor, uh, those two were probably fairly close. They were only about 27 votes apart. Uh, so Sleepy Hollow won, <laughs> uh, but just barely. So uh, I'm excited that I'm going to try to work on Winter Arbor today uh, as planned and get a couple of those trees done so it'll keep moving forward. But Sleepy Hollow will be the one that gets the focus um, for that week in May. And then in the fourth pairing, Winter Quaker versus Crabapple Tree. Those were extremely close. In fact... Uh, it was only about oh, 18, 18 votes apart. <laughs> so those were really, really close. I just worked on Crabapple Tree, so you just got to see it. And uh, I'm excited about that. But I'm hopeful that with a three-day focus, I might be able to finish my Whip Go Goal uh, for, for Winter Quaker and just have it ready um, for when it's called, because it hasn't been called yet. Okay, so that's next month's focus pieces. Giggles in the Snow, Sheep Virtues, Sleepy Hollow, and win, um, Winter Quaker. So looking forward to doing that, and thank you so much for voting. Here is the result of the WIPGO uh, numbers being pulled today. The, no the two numbers pulled today were 22 and 19. So, for my 22, it was giggles in the snow to work at least 10 hours. Well, you know, a while back, I had already done 14. So, that goal has really, really already been met. However, I had said that if I had time, I would try to do it again. Um, and in three days' time, I'm sure I'll get 10 hours again. But I can go ahead and mark that square 
blue because it's actually been met. And then the next number that was being called is number 19. And for me, that is another new start. It is Sew Together, which I have committed to put five hours on that piece. So I now need to start field mice and stitch one of the mouse, uh, or one mouse of the two. And then I need to start Sew Together. I've got to pick which one I want to start and get it started. So I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna wrap this uh, little video up, try to get it uploaded. And um, I did think it would be interesting to give you pictures of my um, gathering eggs where I started at the focus of the month and where I'm at now after rolling the dice for the four Mondays, uh, just to give you a you know comparison right together. So I'm gonna do that here and then wrap up the video. Happy stitching, everybody. I something over there. Yeah. Good girl, good girl. You did pretty good on this day. I forget just get you come back to me now. <laughs> You're on the wrong side, girl. Come here, pick up. Where are you? Right here. Oh. Stay right there, Coco. Stay. Look at Mama. Look. Tell her to look. Hey, Coco. Look. Look. Good girl. I didn't hear a click. Look over there. I'm taking a video. Oh. Are you a good girl? She looks like a lion. Mm, <laughs> big lion. I'm a lion camera. Hello? 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 H